Hi and happy New Year's Eve. Um, we want to take some time today just to reflect on the year that's been and look ahead uh, to 2024 as well. And we're going to do that in conversation style, a bit like we have in the past. We've got our cups of coffee and we're just going to have a little bit of a chat. Um, so, <clears throat> Ian, we had a verse like we often do at the beginning of 2023. We had the verse from Isaiah saying, uh, forget the former things, um, I'm doing a new thing, don't dwell on the past. You know, how has that come to pass kind of in, in 2023? Mm. Have you noticed um, some of the new things that God's been doing in, in and through Restore in 2023? It's a good question, isn't it? I, I think it's really helpful at the end of every year to kind of reevaluate how the year's been and to have some sort of benchmark mm. to um, assess it with, I guess. And in lots of ways, when, when you feel like God said something, it makes sense for that to be the de- benchmark that we use to assess the year, because it's easy to drift off course and forget what God said. I felt one of, one of the strengths of that verse um, was about the leaving things behind. Mm. And I think um, it feels like, it, I know this year's had loads of challenge in it, and particularly globally, um, but I think um, the whole impact of COVID and the way that we had to stop doing things and, and for many of us do life very differently, the impact of that seemed to linger for a long time. And I know when we first began to regather, you know, we couldn't sing, um, we couldn't do a lot of the personal stuff. So a lot of the key elements of who we were, we weren't able to express. And I think a year ago, we were still coming out of that. And I would say a big difference for me is it feels like that has receded now. And it feels like, oh, we're back. Yeah. I, and I think, I, I think that's a massive gain because actually one of, the, one of the goals that we set at the start of the year was, was that we were doing church, but that by the end of the year, we would feel like we were doing healthy church. Mm. And I think if you use that as a measuring stick to it, things feel a lot, lot more healthy. And I think in general, people feel more healthy and more engaged. So I don't know whether that's a new thing or mm. a bit of a restoration yeah, yeah. in lots of ways. And, and I think it's a restoration. I think there probably are new things. But I, I think for me, when I look back on... on 2023 I I think actually I'm just so grateful that we're another year down the road and you can see signs of new life and new growth and I think that's what I'm most excited about. I definitely think there feels like there's just that picture kind of green shoots coming Mm. up through Mm. after a long hard Mm. winter Mm. Um, yeah there's definitely that sense of life again and health and um, I mean across the the different locations I'm seeing kind of different versions of what that looks like in different expressions mm. and so in terms of kind of the new things form things but were there have there been specific kind of memorable moments maybe linked to that but or maybe just stand out alone yeah the things that i celebrate massively if you remember at the start of the year we did to push into the um leaving behind the former things mm. we did a whole series on pruning mm. which talked about intentionally cutting back because that's what happens with with plants not that i'm a great gardener at all <laughs> but that is what you the theory of what you're meant to do with plants so they then flourish and trees and things and i think for me what has been so lovely is starting to see people flourish mm. again um and it's interesting because jesus talks doesn't he about the kingdom of, of heaven being like a mustard seed and you plant it and it grows mm. and i think what i've been so excited about is that you can go through like a winter season and have a lot of challenge and a lot of pain but actually if you take the mustard seed of a bit of faith of jesus and plant it it comes back to life and i think this year we've seen things coming back to life i think the biggest win for me has been i think every one of our locations has new people Mm. in the room now on a sunday and that's everything that we've dreamt for that we've prayed about and what's what is really really exciting is it's not just new people in the room it's people who don't yet know jesus and we're seeing a number of people like that in every one of our locations and for me that just thrills my heart and i I found myself talking about it recently and, and nearly cried just because it felt like such a long path to get there, but it actually feels that is the health that we're starting to see. I, I think two other things that I really celebrate for this year. One, um, at the start of the year, thinking about painful things and maybe pruning, mm-hmm. we faced a tough financial climate yeah. and we had to put the entire Restore team through a restructure that meant people were at risk of being made redundant and a number of people were made redundant. 
I'm just so grateful for the way that God has led us through that process. And so I celebrate the people who led the process, people like Joe Mackey and Duncan Gould, who did an absolutely fantastic job. I celebrate the character of our members of staff who had to face tough decisions and did it with such a godly heart and perspective. And what is great is every one of them so far, we're praying the same for Matt Chow, who's just ended his role, but every one of them has got a job that fits them, that provides what they need, and they're still actively engaged in the life of Restore. And that speaks, it was a few weeks ago, I was doing the Relevant series, and uh, Raynard was leading worship, and uh, Trina was speaking. Yep. And uh, we were talking to someone afterwards, and, and, and it, it was, was like, yeah, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> someone, <coughs> someone that I can't remember who, you know. <coughs> but how incredible no. is that? And what does that say about the grace of God, but also the character yeah. and the attitude and the heart of people? That has been such a massive win. And supernaturally so. That doesn't happen in ordinary life. That, that has the touch of God on it. Mm. And I think the other thing was um, we got in the autumn uh, opportunity to do our first Restore Wide Family um, Day. And that was just lovely to see everyone, not, I know not everyone was able to be there, but a lot of people from every location being in the same room and that sense of, oh, we're still part of a bigger family and isn't it nice to see one another together? For me, that, that's been some of the amazing high spots. Yeah. I've really enjoyed um, watching kind of Epping as well, yeah. kind of just develop this community mm. and um, an expression of church that isn't the traditional structure. Mm. Um, but coming together around the table and, you know, sharing God's word, sharing food, sharing life. And for me, that's been one of the, the big wins, one of the, the great kind of sprouts coming out the ground of mm. new life. Mm. And, um, yeah, just really thankful for seeing that. Well, in Epping, it, it, when I chat to people in Epping, they'll say, ah, this is what it means to have church that works through the week and that really is shared, week that isn't based around an event on a Sunday. Yeah. And that is so, so um, what we want to celebrate and lean into, yeah. I think, going forward. Yeah, that's brilliant. So lots of good things, memorable yeah. moments. Um, you didn't mention Malcolm coming on team. <laughs> um, I think every moment with Malcolm is memorable. It's always. Um, I love Malcolm and Emily Pierce dearly, and I'm so, so happy. Um, that they're working that, for me and not you. <laughs> yeah, that I'm no longer on team. No. <laughs> um, I just think it's such, just a beautiful thing to have uh, them step closer into to leadership. Mm. Um, so that, for me, is, is a great thing. But have there been challenges along the year, throughout the year as well? Um, that you specific ones that go oof hmm. yeah that was a that was a moment. I think what's been I don't think there's been lots for restore overall or us as a team or organisationally. I've just been aware of the number of people who continue to face mm. really challenging situations. And a few weeks ago, I was at uh, Albany Restore Albany on Remembrance Sunday, and you did a great thing at the end after we um, observed the minute silence um, they had communion laid out on a table and she offered people the opportunity to go and take communion and just bring before God their grief mm. with significant people that they'd lost and there was a lot of people who had lost significant people and it f and, and I know that that story has been repeated in other locations this year as well and so always always the hardest thing are the the, the people stuff mm. because we weep with one another yeah. we're called to weep with one another we rejoice with one another and I'm aware this this it's a tough economic climate it, it, there's a lot of hardship but mental health is still really challenging yeah. there's a lot of people going through a lot of issues and, and I think the greatest challenge may be for church is how we love and support one another. There's been great instances of people doing it, which is, 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 is great, because that needs to be everything we're about. But I think that is the greatest challenge. This is the, the extremities that we've had to face have mm. gone on way longer than we would ever think. And as soon as we think we're out of one, something else comes. And so just journeying with people through the ups and downs of life, I think is, it, it's a privilege. But it's, it's a challenge and yeah. it's never yeah. fun, is it? Yeah. I think we're waiting for normal to return. And <laughs> we have a joke in our Zambian team. Uh, when a colleague of ours joined several years ago, um, we started by, oh, this isn't normal. Oh, it's not normal. And she actually ended up 
uh, she's moved on to another job, happily so, um, between all of us. She's now on our board in Zambia. But when she left, she said, I never did find that normal week. Um, I think that's true. I don't, I don't think there's always going to be, no. we're in a life of crisis and, and difficulty and mm. hardship, and it's how we journey that together mm. and with God. Well, um, challenge isn't yeah. necessarily a bad no, thing. No. And actually, when I look back on my life, the times of, of greatest pressure have actually often been the times that I've grown. You don't feel it at the time because no. you're being stretched, but the other side of it. Yeah. And actually, I, I think God can do something really significant when we put our roots down together. I've been reading about trees recently. You're going to become a gardener after all. <laughs> no, it's all theoretical for me. But do you know, trees work in community, hmm. and, which you don't tend to think, do you? We often draw a picture of a yeah. tree on its own. And their root systems interconnect. And it's one of the ways. So Canadian redwoods, I think, are the tallest trees yeah. in the world. And their roots only go down six feet. Right. But the reason they stand is they all connect to one another and the roots intertwine, which is why sometimes the land moves when the wind blows, mm. because it's all the interconnected roots. And actually we were made to be interconnected and we flourish when we're interconnected. And I think in times of challenge, there's an opportunity to connect better. And I would say one of the things I celebrate this year is I think we are connecting better mm. and I think we are connecting at a deeper level. And I think we're starting to build more of a culture of transparency and openness mm. and vulnerability. And I think that is more Jesus-like. I also think it's what the world desperately needs these days. Mm. So I'm gonna turn the attention off me oh. onto you. Oh. So what's been your highlights from this last year, Jodie? Um, I've, well, the last year, 18 months, I've been traveling a lot. Um, I spent a lot of time in Zambia. Mm. We and, noticed. Yeah, I've not been, on the, not been in front of the camera much. Um, and I've been visiting family in Australia as well. Um, I think one of the highlights, and I mentioned it briefly at the AGM, but the, the new Zambia director that we appointed um, to oversee the team in Zambia, now Dan and Melissa have relocated. It's just such a joy um, to, to see, have seen, to look at how God brought us into a relationship with Daniel, uh, the new Zambia director, and had gone before us. And, um, and he's just thriving and flourishing in his role. And to see um, some of his passions, him and his wife, and the things God's called them to, then become part of kind of the beyond ourselves um, culture and team as well. So I think a massive highlight for me is something that could have gone horribly wrong, um, could have been a make or break thing for us as a team, actually, has been an absolute joy. Mm. So, to yeah. another healthy transition. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, another really healthy, healthy changing of a season. Yeah, yeah, really healthy. Interestingly, the, the connect. What been, what's been most challenging for you mm -hmm. in the last year? Um, I think the, so obviously last year, um, my brother and his wife and my four nieces and nephews moved to the other side of the world. Um, <clears throat> and that was a challenge last year to, to be, in London, a place I called home, but no longer felt like home mm. because most of my family were no longer here. Um, and then this year, uh, Zambia, another place I call home, um, Dan and Melissa and their three boys, uh, people I consider family, <laughs> uh, moved. And so the second place that I call home and consider family no longer feels like home in some ways. And um, that's, that's quite... Um, challenging and mm. brings a lot of grief mm. or brought a lot of grief um, and so I think my biggest challenge has, has had to be lean into God in that and um, I'm just so thankful like you say kind of in some of the hardest challenges where I could have felt the most isolated lonely mm. you know sad any of those just feel like God's just been so gracious mm. and I genuinely feel a deep joy. There's not moments, there are still moments of, of sure. tears and sadness because sure. it's me. Um, but you, haven't, you haven't cried yet. I haven't. So we do really, I we do really well. Because I genuinely, yeah, I, I genuinely feel um, a deep peace mm. about um, whatever may come in the next year and whatever life will look like in the next five mm. years. So I think it's been a really hard challenge, but actually, I feel rejuvenated, mm. um, which is not what I expected mm. at all. So yeah, it's great. Genuinely happy. Mm, good, <laughs> good, good. Yeah. And last year, you 
um, towards the end that you took a sabbatical. I did. Yeah. Kind of enforced, enforced sabbatical. Enforced sabbatical, yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe sick leave more sick, than sabbatical. Yeah. But Compassionate sick leave. Uh, you took time off. Um, <laughs> necessary time off. That's, that's just so that people know that I can qualify for a sabbatical at another point. <laughs> but you took that time off. And so, because last year was a very tough year. Yeah. And, um, you were honest and vulnerable with, with us as a church and open about um, some of the things you were going through personally and as a family. And so how are you this year? How, mm. how are you doing much a year better. on? Much, 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 much better. I'm mm. very grateful to God for it. I, I think, like you say, we were on overload plus, so not just running mm. on empty, really past the point for that. And actually taking time out made a huge amount of difference. I started the year, I, was, I think January was my last it was meant to be part-time, but we were doing a staff re restructure, so it didn't quite work that way. Mm. Um, but I would say that we've regained a bit of margin in our lives, because Chris and I, we've, we've now got no kids at home. And, and I know I should mourn that, but we've been celebrating quite a lot, because it was so intense up until then, not that we don't love our kids, and so grateful to God for them. But there was a lot of challenge, and actually just having the space to kind of redecorate some of the rooms, mm. reclaim some of the space, has just meant we've been able to start to breathe again. And I would say I feel at the end of the year a lot healthier than I did at the start mm. of the year, which is a good sign as well, because yeah. I've been back at work. We've not necessarily had a straightforward year, um, but actually I've, I feel like I've come to life a lot, yeah. lot more. So I feel like I'm a lot, lot more like my old self. Mm. And Chris spoke the other week in Loughton for uh, the first time in over three years. And uh, I think it was one of those, she could have just got up and said ham and eggs and peas and people would have cheered and celebrated. <laughs> Because just being there and at the point of wanting to do it and, mm. and being able to do it yeah. was a massive win for us. Yeah. So a, again, just really, really grateful mm. that, that what has been intensive and, and in reality could have taken us out, yeah. um, God has, funnily enough, restored us. Yeah. yeah. Well, it goes back to what you were saying right at the beginning of our conversation. There's, there seems to be a restoration happening. Yeah. Maybe it's not new things as such, um, but there does seem to be a restoration. I think, so, and some of that does seem to be a restoration around emotional health mm. for some of us and um, yeah, just well-being and, um, and some people are still on the journey mm. for that. I mean, it's a lifelong journey anyway, but I can see God restoring and mm. you know, for us to be able to sit here and say, you know, it's, it's good. Been a good year. It's good. You yeah. know, not without challenge, not without grief, not without loss, not without heartbreak, but actually we can look back and see where God's been at work mm. and the joy that brings. And, and you know, I didn't say it just now, but for me, having church community, so I'm not sure I've been in England longer than six weeks at a time over the last year or 18 months, and, but in those weeks when I am here to, to have a home in church when home has become some other thing for me um, mm. has been really important mm. and that, that connected us, that community that you spoke mm. of. I really feel that with mm. the people kind of I share roots with. Mm. Um, and so that's really special. And I think when you start to come alive again, you start to dream again. Mm. Because I, I think you, you come out of survival mode yeah. into, ah, now what's coming next? Yeah. And, and, and I, I come alive then. So yeah. for me, that's a restoration of vision and hope and mm. dreams, really. So on that note, as we come to the close of the conversation, what? What do you sense God is saying uh, for Restore for, for mm. 2024? We started with the word for 2023, looking mm. back and reflecting on that. So what's, what's God saying to you um, and to us for 2024? It was really exciting. Is we had a prophetic give, word given by a visiting speaker at, at Loughton um, in October. I, I wasn't there, I missed it. Um, but Joe Mackey was on the front row with a phone and, and this guy said, I think I've got a word for the church. And so she got a phone out and videoed it, which was a, a really inspired moment. Um, and it was a guy who doesn't know us at all. And it wasn't what we was expecting him to do either. Um, but he um, gave a word knowing none of our history and talked about the fact that he felt like the last five years had had, had a lot of challenge um, and we'd restructured um, and there'd been a pain in that and there'd been a loss in that and that for many of us we were carrying grief mm. because of, of people who weren't necessarily alongside us, who we thought would be alongside us, spoke into all of the pain, but then said, but I feel like, and he likened it to Ezekiel 37 and the Valley of Dry Bones, um, which I'll be speaking on next week, and, uh, and we'll have more on this over the coming weeks. Um, but he talked about the fact that the reshaping is like the putting the dry bones together mm. and starting to reform the shape of who God's called us to be. 
Then he talked about God putting on the sinews and the muscles and the, the skin, um, which is kind of rebuilding us in terms of our relationship and I think our health. It's the kind of coming to life again. And then the next thing that happens is, is there's a prophecy and the wind of the spirit comes and the body is propelled into life and then becomes a, a, actually an army. Um, and he said he really felt that for us the year 2024 was going to be a year of activation. And what we were going to experience was God was going to breathe by his spirit. And we were going to, he was kind of going to overtake us on the journey. And we would see God breaking out in various ways. And I, for me, that just resonated straight away. I was like, yes, uh, that fits where we are. But it also fits what we've been dreaming for and praying for and longing for. Because you can't manufacture God moving. But, but you can set yourself up in a space for God to move. And I, I think one of the great things about this last year, you know, another thing I'd celebrate really, you know, at AGM, we put in place a, I think, stronger governance structure. Mm. We've strengthened our trustees, mm. no offence to the old trustees, you did a fantastic job, but we've been able to add new people and new capacity into that. We've recreated an eldership team. It's like we've put the body in the position ready for this next season yeah. and we've kind of laid some foundations that will undergird everything. And I think God is going to breathe on us in 2024 and I'm really excited to see what God does. And the exciting thing when, when you think that God's going to breathe on you is you never know what that's going to look yeah. like and, and it normally isn't anything like you think it's going to yeah. be. But just that sense of a year of activation mm. and really, really coming to life and seeing God on the move. Yeah. And I'm really excited about that. I think what's not to love about that? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, on that note, I think that's something to be excited about as we head into the new year and looking ahead and something we don't want to miss that wind. We don't, oh, what, what was that gust? Yeah. We want to be poised and ready to, to, to go with the wind of the spirit and see and have eyes to see what he's activating and, and doing. So. Would you like to pray for us yeah. as a church as we come yeah, to a close? And, I would, yeah. and I, I'm aware that today is New Year's Eve. And so, again, it might be good to reflect on the last year. It may be good to ask again, Lord, are there things I need to leave behind mm. to step into the new that you have for me? If it's going to be a year of activation, what do I need to leave behind that uh, could be a barrier to you being able to activate where you want to activate? And I'd encourage you um, tonight or tomorrow, um, read Ezekiel 37. And at the start of the new year, let's cooperate with what God is speaking over us and start to sit in that passage and those verses and ask God to speak to us individually, but also into the life of restore. Um, and uh, I will now pray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lord, I want to thank you that you are faithful. And the reality is, Lord, I think about that tree in Jeremiah that bears fruit in every season because it's, it's rooted in you and it's rooted by a stream of living water. And what I want to thank you that it feels like this year, Lord, we've known that we're rooted uh, by the river of your spirit and we started to see the fruit come to pass. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for that. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love that has, has enabled us to come to the place that we are. And Lord, as we come to the end of one year, Lord, we want to say thank you to you for all that has been. But also we want to turn our eyes forward. We want to look uh, uh, first and foremost at your face. But Lord, we want to head in the direction that you've called us to. And Father, where it does feel like there's resurrection power, resurrection life, that there's a sense that this year is going to be a year where you activate uh, uh, fresh uh, things in our lives, maybe reactivate some stuff, but also in terms of our communities. Lord, we just simply say we are ready, Lord. Mm. And Lord, we offer ourselves to you at the start of this year, at the end of at this joining of two years. Lord, we offer ourselves to you and we say, Holy Spirit, will you breathe on us? Will you empower us? And will you lead us into the fullness of what you have for us as church family together? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. I feel like I should say cheers, but yeah. my coffee cup's empty <laughs> and it was only coffee. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Boom. Hi, and welcome to our New Year's Eve service. No, it's not a service, is it? Well, it kind of is. Sorry, can we clap again? Yes. I can't. Can I do it with my coffee? You, you don't have to clap again, you're good.
<clears throat> you might air it with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what normally happens <clears throat> to me. I've actually got a tickle in my throat. <clears throat> Sorry. Big cut. <laughs> <laughs>